Hello, good morning. Uh, my name is Devdatta Kulkarni. I'm a senior principal engineer at Intel. Uh, I have been working on the liquid cooling, uh, pump two phase liquid cooling technology for the last several years. Um, before joining uh, data center business, I have worked on the power electronic side, and this technology has been in the field for several years. So, the, this technology is not a new technology in the market. The, the newness is bringing this technology from different fields like power electronics or HVAC for the data center use in the data center applications. So today, uh, the people who know me, I can talk on this technology for days, uh, for the last two days, but I, uh, I will try to actually condense my talk for 15 minutes and the, the gist of the talk is uh, working with the people like Verti, uh, or the all the partners here, uh, Vertiv, Parker, uh, Honeywell, um, uh, corporate uh, uh, friends like Associates, we are trying to actually see if we are, how we can actually help this technology to get to the data center. It's not like trying to compete with one or another thing. It's the different technology you may have seen some of the papers uh, in the last couple of days. There are some challenges on this technology and last three to four years, we have actually worked on these uh, challenges to make make it simple, make it usable for the data center applications. And there are always, uh, again, uh, advantages wise, the two phase uh, cooling technology has quite a bit of advantages compared to single phase liquid cooling. Um, and the diff, sorry, I'm not able to see, but. Okay, so this is the, uh, in general, uh, the technology side, uh, I wanted to actually give it up, make sure we are on the same page. So when we say the pump two phase, so, so the first word is pumped, two phase, and also the liquid that we are using is refrigerant. Refri for this particular uh, uh, technology, we have selected down the refrigerant 515B, and I will talk about why and other things uh, in, as we move. The next, next thing I want to make sure when we talk about pump two phase technology with refrigerant, the, the word pumped is very critical. A lot of people actually a little bit uh, mislabeled as compressor-based liquid cooling technology, and then they say, oh, the PUE or the TCO is not that great. So I just wanted to make sure if you are thinking in your mind how it looks like, it just looks like as a single-phase DLC system. Uh, from the visual perspective, there is no compressor. There is a pump-based system. So in, the, in this system, you have the same ingredients uh, like code plate, uh, secondary network, uh, rack manifold, low manifold, CDUs. Uh, the, the thermal transport, uh, so when the, the liquid comes from the reservoir in the pump, so it's 100% liquid, uh, it's about a couple of degrees of the subcooling, so that means it's not boiling for the pump, uh, to avoid the pump cavitation. As soon as it goes to the, the code plates, now it starts uh, boiling, it takes the heat. But it's also at, uh, you have the momentum from the pump. So it's not just like the pool boiling, it's a flow boiling. So thermodynamically, we're using the refrigerant, using the, the forced boiling, you can get the best heat transfer that you can achieve. Uh, you know, if, if you have a look at the, the heat transfer textbooks, that's the best uh, heat transfer coefficient you can achieve. And uh, the flow rate is decided such a way that for every parallel loop, if you know the, your uh, heat load, which is Q, the equation that you have to just remember is M dot HFG into quality. What is the quality that we are bringing in? So as long as rule of thumb, again, uh, looking at the low heat flux devices, if you keep your uh, vapor quality less than 70, 75%, you should not be uh, running into the tryout issue. So if you know your heat load, which is the max heat load, you can actually set, uh, set your flow rate such a way that you, know, you will never get into the dryout conditions. Um, and also sometimes if you provide it more, as long as you are boiling, you, are, you should not actually see the impact on your junction temperature or case temperature, whichever way you are looking at. So, so this is, um, another thing is when, when the mixture goes to the condenser, um, condenser could be air-cooled condenser if you are using side cart kind of uh, um, operation in the air-cooled data center, or you can actually take this heat outside directly if you are in the edge data centers and use the ambient air to cool it. Uh, and also if you are look, uh, using the liquid to liquid CDU, I have a few examples uh, in the data side, but you can bring very warm water cooling. So this also helps on the, the, 
the end users who is actually uh, looking for the warm water cooling. For example, the, the one application that I will be showcasing that we can cool about kilowatt of processor using 55C incoming refrigerant with the facility water of 48C, even using the 200 kilowatt system at this point. So this can be actually expanded to 400 kilowatt and, and beyond, but it, it's all about the sustainability if we can actually uh, use the, uh, the, the, the water that is coming out of the CDU, which is more than 50C, we can actually use directly for the heat reuse application if that is needed. So again, just like a single phase, as I mentioned, there is a quite a bit of commonality in the form factors of the CDU. Again, uh, for the CDU, we are working with uh, Volti, who also have the single phase CDU. So we are trying to make sure we are just replacing the same form factor and uh, putting the, this particular technology, if somebody is interested for high heat flux, for next generation uh, products, as well as from the sustainability. So as you can see, there are same uh, two types of CDUs. Uh, uh, for example, the air cooled, as I mentioned, sidecar or the refrigerant to liquid CDU. Also, we have the in row CDU, uh, refrigerant to liquid. And another combination of it, as I mentioned, in the age application, you can just use it, uh, your air cooled condenser outside, and uh, uh, just bring the refrigerant directly to the, your AI uh, systems. And another thing I want to make sure when I say AI system, Again, I can claim boldly it's agnostic to which processor we are talking. It's, it's only you have to make sure what is the, the TDP or what is the, uh, the heat load you are trying to cool. And basically, this system can actually allow you mix and match or heterogeneity in the same server. You don't have to keep on actually doing all your calculations because once you actually know it's a 400 kilowatt CDU that you are putting or 200 kilowatt CDU, as long as the, the whole TDP or the whole heat load is equivalent to that, you can use uh, one or the other solution in the, in the same system. So the main components that I would like to say, like uh, uh, where, we, uh, where we are bringing these industries from, mostly from the HVAC. So, so from the facility side, the people who is dealing with this refrigerant for charging and a, a vacuum, they are all aware of it, but only we are actually transitioning this technology to the IT side of the uh, uh, area now. The, the critical thing is the fluid, cord plate, hoses, connectors, just like the, the, the single phase uh, liquid cooling. Uh, as I mentioned, this is a refrigerant that we are using, uh, and uh, we have been working with Honeywell for the last seven plus years to find the right targeted fluid. Uh, as I mentioned, these are refrigerants. Yes, they are PFAS as of now, and uh, we are actually tracking the, the PFAS evaluation as we speak. It's uh, energy uh, saving on one end versus uh, the, the performance as well as the cooling capabilities. Uh, at this point, uh, I will not go line by line, but as you can see, there are a lot of choices available. But if you look at the 515B, which is the GWP is less than 300, and it's a non-flammable. So, uh, so we are trying to actually uh, make sure we are not getting into the flammability, but the systems are designed such a way that if the, uh, there are some ways to actually figure it out how to get the a 2 l liquids, we can actually switch the refrigerant from 515B to 1234Z in the same system, which is a GWP of one. Uh, there are also low pressure refrigerants, as you may have seen uh, from Shahar and uh, Rich Bonner yesterday. So that's another technology. Uh, again, working with uh, our uh, uh, Honeywell, we have already done the, the material compatibility testing between the, the different liquids. 134A was our baseline. We just wanted to make sure if we are actually converting from 134A systems to these two liquids, what are the, where we want to actually change the material systems. From the cold plate perspective, uh, there is a vision. Uh, I, I, actually, I have some uh, yesterday paper with Associates. To start with, one can actually use the same cold plate from single phase to two phase. Uh, and we have actually shared the results. These are the same cold plate manufacturing techniques, uh, like the skywing or just the machining, blazed cold plate, as long as they can withstand up to 200 PSI. Uh, and as of the IEC 6238 for the single phase, uh, you have to do that testing. The same testing, we can do it for two phase. So the cold pit can be the same. So that's an avenue for standardization if we can think about. Uh, the, I already talked a little bit about the working conditions in general that 
the, the, what you have to think about is the maximum vapor quality has to be 70%. Whichever the loop, loop you put it, it, is it serial or parallel, it doesn't mind, uh, it doesn't matter. We have the uh, one loop which is like 1.1 kilowatt, four, four of them in series, so it's a four kilowatt, and we can just do uh, the same principle and it works exactly the same. The tem temperature does not change from one to another. Another thing is for last three years, we are working with Parker Hannifan, and actually we have developed the, uh, or Parker has developed the hoses, it's called 286, dash four, dash six, dash eight, every size, and as well as now, the quick disconnects. So, so it's, it took us a long time, but actually, uh, finally we are there that even working pressure is 200 PSI, we can actually uh, use our hands, it's called the quick third quick disconnect. We can just assemble and disassemble using hand, we don't need tools. So that was one of the, uh, these are the two key ingredients that are critical that are now enabled and 2025 you will see these products online. This is high level, it will look like the full CDU, this is a 200 full demonstration. Uh, four racks, uh, the, the, the next generation AI, it's not really dense, one can put all the 200 kilowatt in one rack now. <laughs> but this is what we wanted to showcase, the, the technology with the loads going from zero load all the way to full TDP, mix and match, uh, 40 loops in parallel, no temperature swings at all. So, so there are some tricks uh, working uh, with the uh, HVAC industry, like uh, especially having the bypass wall. And the same thing we are working with uh, single phase side is if we have the 40 PSID pressure drop between inlet and outlet, then you can actually plug and play any servers in the same system as long as the TDP is not exceeding your CDU capability. Uh, again, not going too much. It's a low manifold, very similar to single, man, uh, single phase. The, the couple of things uh, like rotor lock and the bypass wall, these are the, the HVAC uh, components to dis disengage the, the one, one rack and have the manifold um, oh, pressure regulation. Low level manifold, uh, sorry, rack level manifold can be as same as single phase, only right now the changes in the QD is different. My vision is can we actually even have the same QDs between refrigerant and water? It will come there if there is an advantage, I'm, I'm sure about that. So th on server side, there may be the same server, we can have it with the QDs and on the back end can, depending on the use condition, one can have actually single phase or two phase, whichever the CDU they may want to use it. So with that said, actually this is just the introductory paper we, we actually uh, working with uh, the CodePet team. So uh, there is a, because this is a newborn technology, I would say, there's a lot of uh, standardization activities we can try to OCP, maybe on the sustainability, CodePet, et cetera. So open for having that collaboration. The technology is there. Thank you. Time for one, one or two questions. No, uh, if not, we're going to break now. So thanks, everyone. Uh, oh, sorry, I didn't question? see Philip. My bad. Oh. Go ahead. Hey, I noticed your filtration. You have it at 20 micron. Do you need to go that low? So Shoha mentioned his coolant. You don't need a high, he has a 100 micron. So, so we are just using this filtration from the HVAC industry as is for the, the refrigerants. It's, it does not add up extra pressure drop than the, this is a little bit higher pressure drop uh, operating system. So a couple of uh, PSID does not actually hurt it. So we are just keeping it 20 PSID. And it's needed only for the commissioning process. When you put the, the liquid for the first time, once it's there, because it's a refrigerant, it does not have any issues with corrosion. You can actually mix and match anything. So you have to just capture the particles in the, the initial stages. Okay, thank you. All right, thanks everyone.